nice to have you again my friends here on Will Edutech and in this video we're going to be looking at the solution to question 7a typical statistics question but to be more uh, specific we're gonna be looking at a frequency polygon now this question was taken from the CSEC math exam pass paper January 2012 now let's just pull this up a bit now the question states that the histogram below shows the distribution of heights of seedlings in a sample. And here we have our histogram here. Uh, on the y-axis, we have our frequency, simply meaning how often the occurrences happen. And on our x-axis, we have our height in centimeters. Okay. Now, in part A across here to my right, they're asking us to copy and complete the frequency table for the data in the sample. Now, in our first column, um, in, in blue here we have the height in centimeters and these are represented in class intervals okay so for example 1 to 10 would be my first class interval uh, 11 to 20 would be my second class interval all right now in the second column the yellow column here I have my midpoint for each class interval okay and we, sh we, we will soon be looking at that and in the third column here now we have the, the red column we have our frequency and we're obviously we're going to be we're going to be asked to fill out the blanks that's what they mean by copy and complete but before we can get into that we must first look at our table and just analyze some basic stuff one of the first things we want to look at is the scale on our on both our axes both our x-axis and our y-axis uh, how many units we are increasing by that's that's what I mean by the scale for example where the y-axis and the x-axis intersect or where they meet that's called the origin so where my pointer is presently at I'm at the origin now now if I should move from the origin and move one centimeter up obviously that would be five one centimeter I'm increasing to five units and then moving from one centimeters as I move up to the next centimeter if you notice there I would have a 10 so basically my scale is increasing by one centimeter to five units so I would be counting by five five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty and so on and so forth now if you notice or if you should look carefully if you notice we have some little graduations or some little strokes in between zero to five here okay so each stroke that you move up you want to know how many or each graduation you want to know how many you're increasing by also so if you notice if if I'm moving up one centimeter to five units then obviously if I have one two three four five of them in between there then it simply means then for each I'm going up I'm increasing by one for each graduation I, I go up okay my friends now having said that um, if you should look at the y-axis also it's the same scale that we're increasing by from zero to one centimeter here that would be five and then from here the second the first centimeter to the second I'm, I, I'm increasing by ten so basically I'm increasing by from zero here my origin I'm going up five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty and so on and so forth and also the, the these little graduations that that's that falls in between I would be just increasing by one so this would be one two three four five okay so it's always good to know your scale uh, so that you can uh, use it to answer the questions more effectively and if you're not sure in question seven uh, in the May 20 2011 paper I showed you how to calculate your scale so you could always uh, refer back to that video if you're not sure how to calculate your scale or how many you are increasing by okay you could always review that now quickly let's just get into this and fill out this table now if you notice they're asking us to find the midpoint for this third class here my friends now to find the midpoint for the third class let me just go through show you how they came up with the midpoint for the first and the second class now basically what I'm saying midpoint and let me just make a note here I'm just going for short I'm going to say midpoint midpoint point is equal to the lower class lower class LCB lower class boundary and this is a B lower class boundary plus the UCB which is the upper class boundary 
and you're dividing by 2. Okay, that's just a, a, a typical formula for midpoint. Now, let's look at what it means. If you notice, uh, well, for the first class, okay, my friends, for the first class, we have our first class interval here, 1 to 10. In each class interval, you have what you call a lower class limit and an upper class limit. For example, in the first class, the one here would be considered as the lower class limit. And in the second class, the 11 would considered would be considered as the lower class limit. In the third class, 21 would be considered as the lower class limit, okay? And so on and so forth. Now, if I'm dealing with the upper class limits now, I am simply saying the 10 in the first class represents the upper class limit for the first class. The 20 in the second represents the upper class limit for the second class. And the 30 in the third represents the upper class limit for the third class interval okay my friends now having said that having said that now we can use that information to find our class boundaries now to find for example the lower class boundary for the first class okay i would have to subtract 0 0.5 from my lower class limit okay my lower class limit here is one so when i subtract 0 0.5 from 1 then I would get a 0 0.5 for example to get my lower class boundary for the first class for the first class I would have to say 1 minus 0 0.5 and that would be equal to well we know 1 minus 0 0.5 that would give us a 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 would be my lower class boundary now to get my upper class boundary for the first class I would have to take my upper class limit which is 10 so to calculate my upper class boundary for the for the first class I would have to take my upper class limit and add in this case I am adding adding to 10 which is my upper class boundary I'm adding 0 0.5 and that would be equal to 10.5 okay my friends so that's how we calculate class boundaries for to get the lower class boundaries you have to take the lower class limit for each class and subtract 0 0.5 and to get the upper class boundary for each class, you have to take upper class limit and add 0 0.5. Okay, hope that was helpful. So now let's quickly get into it to see how they calculate this. So if they're calculating, if we're calculating midpoint for the first class, let's look at how they got the 5.5. What they did here, they took the uh, the lower class boundary which is 0 0.5 which we have calculated here and to be more specific if you look at the the histogram if you look at the histogram to 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 see where the lower class boundary would fall if you notice the first bar this first bar here that we have here look where it started if this is zero and each little graduation as we have explained before uh me meaning these little bars here you're going up by one if you notice the first bar begins exactly between 0 and 1 and that's a 0.5 because we know exactly between 0 and 1 would be 0.5 if you notice the first bar also stopped at um, if you notice where it stopped it stopped exactly between 10 and 11 okay my friends and exactly between 10 and 11 that would be 10.5 or 10 and a half if you notice where the second bar stopped it went straight up and it stopped uh, exactly in between 20 and 21 and exactly in between 20 and 21 would be 20.5 and that's a trend if you should analyze the graph a bit more careful okay so basically what they did to get the midpoint for each class they took the upper class boundary and added to the lower class boundary and divide it by two all right so here quickly now let's just look at it for the first one to get the 5.5 they took the upper class boundary which we got and the lower class boundary so i'm saying my lower class boundary as we have calculated was 0 0.5 plus our upper class which is 10.5 and i'm dividing that by two and that that's basically uh 11 0 0.5 plus 10.5 would give me 11 divided by 2 and that would work out to be a 5.5 all right and if you notice we have a 5.5 there for answer now for the second class what they did they took the lower class boundary which is 
sorry, which is 10.5, my bad, and add it to the upper class boundary, which is 20.5, and divide that by 2. And then they got a 15.5, okay? If you notice the trend, what is happening to move from 5.5 to 15.5, simply we're adding 10. So, I mean, we could continue that trend going up, my friends. Um, it's pretty much that easy. So, basically, what they're saying here, um, we're adding... We're taking the lower class boundary here, which is 20.5, add it to 30.5, and then divide the result by 2. So here I would get a 25.5 for my midpoint for this class. For the next one, obviously, that would be a 35.5, okay? And for the fourth one, that would be a 45. Point five. Now, that's pretty easy. That's how we calculate that. Now, to get into the frequency now, let's fill out the frequency, the blanks, quickly. Now, if you notice what is happening here, my friends, if you notice what is happening here, the, the height of the bar is being recorded in the frequency column, all right? And if you notice, if I go, should go up to this point, this would be 20, and 1, 2, 2 below 20, well, that's pretty much 18. And if you notice, the first one is 18. And quickly, let's analyze the bars. Okay, if you notice the second bar goes up to 25, if you notice from 20 and we are going up by 5 as we have stated before, this would be 25 and if you notice in the, sec in the table here we have a 25. So we are just going to be looking at how far up the, this, this, the third bar went. If you notice this point here is 25, so this would be 1, 2 below 25. So obviously that would be a 23 because 2 below 25 that would give us a 23. Now the fourth bar it goes up, it stops on the 20 line. And if you come straight across to the y-axis, you notice that horizontal line there passes through the y-axis at 20. So that would go up to 20. And the final bar, uh, if this is 15, then one below 15 would be 14. Okay, my friends? So that's how you fill out the, the frequency column. Now, basically, um, just another pointer before we end this video. Um, if you notice the midpoint, the midpoint is really what you're finding. If And if you should look carefully at the graph, you should pause the video and look carefully. The first midpoint was 5.5. So basically what they're saying, it's the middle of the graph. The middle of the um the bars that they're dealing with on the histogram so that would be 5.5 there if you notice the midpoint falls in the middle for the second one was 15.5 this line here is 15 so 15.5 would be exactly there the next one would be 25.5 and 25.5 would be exactly right there just to point that out to you okay so that's a midpoint that we're that's what we mean by the midpoint of the bars all right so my friends that's it uh, feel free to ask a question if you're still not sure, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye-bye.